So before we do anything else, let's just uh, pray Stefano to lead us in prayer. So as you guys can see, we're not holding instruments and we're mostly not dressed in different, you know. We're, we're mostly just going to do something really different. And before we usually, usually celebrate culture by singing different songs, different languages. And that's still cool and I love that. But I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to just know our cultures here. I think a lot of times because we're all from Nebraska, we just assume that we're all the same. And I think there's more to us. And... That's why I talk to these awesome individuals. And we're going to just um, tell you guys about our lives. Is that cool? Awesome. So if you guys want, there's going to be pictures up there. And um, I want my people to talk about these pictures. Is that cool? Lead us on. All right. So I'm Stefan Becker. And thanks. Um, so I grew up in France, which is in Europe. It's um, there. So I grew up in Bordeaux, which is the southern part of France. Do you want me to get up and point it out? Sure. So I grew up right here. And we're about 45 minutes from the ocean and about two and a half hours from Spain. So that's where I grew up. And um, yeah, um, France is the major religion in France is Catholic, but most people in France are uh, non-practicing or atheist. Um, but there's a very large Muslim minority in the country as well. So that's awesome. So um, if we can go back to the next slide, I just I forgot to mention that we got all these different cultures um, in the globe. If you see the different pins, that's that's mostly where these countries are in the world. Um, and for the most part, they're not very close together. <laughs> um, so France is in the red dot, and then we'll also be talking about Nigeria, which is pretty close to the green dot. And then we, got, we go all the way down to the Philippines, which is the blue dot. Oh, and uh, by the way, if you guys have any questions at the end, like, we will have time to like, ask you guys that. So just, just a little side remark. So uh, let's go back to the pictures about France. I think you were going to tell us just about your church. Okay, so um, my dad is a church planner, um, and those are definitely Susanna, Susanna's do you pictures. Susanna, <laughs> talk about your church. Okay. Well, um, I grew up in France, but I grew up in the northern part in Normandy. I lived like 30 minutes away from the D-Day beaches of the Second World War. Um, my dad was a pastor for about 10 years, and that's... Uh, our church um, up there is next to the beach. Um, it was a small church. Um, we were like two dozen people gathering every Sunday. In the summertime and June vacation, we'd get a lot more people because there were a lot of tourists that would come through. Um, the town I lived in was a touristic town, so there would be like nobody there in the winter, but then during the summer and vacation, um, it was like two or three times the amount of people that are usually there. Um, is there another... That's awesome. Um, and there's another slide, I think. But uh, what were you saying? Uh, you said it was near Normandy up in the northern? Cool. So, <laughs> awkward transition. Um, how about you, Hosanna? Where are you from? I'm from Naga, Philippines, which, if you know Manila, it's like, on the same island, so it's on the island of Luzon, but it's southeast of there always. Cool. Maybe, oh, there, look, it's a picture, hooray. Um, so the star is Manila, which is actually where Grace is from, and that's the capital of the Philippines. And then, um, yeah, I'm on the same island, but maybe later on there will be another picture, and it's of Mount Mayon, which is, it used to be at least um, the most symmetrical mountain in the world, and it's just um, very beautiful, but it keeps erupting, so it might not be anymore. 
Um, <laughs> but I live close to there. <laughs> like Hosanna said, I'm Grace, and I lived in Metro Manila, Philippines. So it's very like urban, and there's a lot of developing cities and stuff. So it's not like rural areas and villages. Um, but there, the main religion there is Catholicism. Um, and there's a lot of little cults throughout the Philippines, but Islam is also growing as well. My name is Marianne, and um, my passport country is actually Cameroon, but I grew up in Jos, Nigeria. So um, that's over there in the north of Nigeria, and the um, major religion is Christianity, but Islam is also um, really big. It's like 43%, so it's pretty high. That's awesome. Well, now I want to ask you guys just like different questions and I want to leave it completely open to you guys. Um, but this is mostly just about God in your country and uh, for the most part we started, you guys started talking about the predominant religions where you guys are from. Um, but I would say the next most important question is um, how, do you, how do the people in your country view Christianity? Um, I guess Susanna can answer that for me. Um, Christianity is, in, because the Philippines is such a Catholic culture, um, it's really helpful in evangelism in that like, they understand concepts of the Son of God and stuff, and so that's good, but when you ask them if like they're a Christian, they're going to be like, well, I'm Catholic. And then they're going to be like, well, are you born again? Which is kind of a derogatory thing where they're like, are you like one of those crazy charismatic people who's weird? Um, and so just along with that, um, not that there's anything against charismatic people. Um, <laughs> anyway, moving on. So, um, just in that, like, when you're sharing with them, the main thing is just to emphasize um, and just show them that being a Christian isn't so much about like all the rituals of religion and um, maybe the things you're known for doing, but it's about having a relationship with God. It's kind of the same thing in France. Um, they view Christianity more as a religion and a tradition. It's not a living faith. And if you ask people if, you know, what religion they are, they'll say I'm Catholic, not practicing. And they may not even believe in God. It just means that they were baptized as an infant Catholic Church, or they might go to the Catholic Church like for Easter or Christmas. Um, for me growing up, it was really difficult because, you know, I could share my faith with my friends, but they viewed it more as a philosophy. It wasn't, it wasn't like I said, like a living faith. Um, and uh, Jesus, they view just as a really good person, but they don't see him like transforming your life. Would you agree with that, Stefan, or do you have Yeah, something? I would. I would also say that it depends on the generation. Uh, generations tend to view it differently uh, based on their experiences with it. Wow. So uh, going along with that, how do people view God differently where you're from? In Nigeria, um, most people believe there's one God, a God who is sovereign over all of humanity who created everything but um like there's this high view of like god is up there and humanity is way down there but i guess like for christians we understand that um god loves us and he came through jesus to die for us and to have a relationship with us so like christians have that understanding but most like it, most muslims just have this belief of god is sovereign and Inshallah, which means like whatever God wills, like he's sovereign over all and whatever happens is just whatever he wills to do. But even um, people who aren't Christian or Muslim have an understanding of um, the existence of a spiritual world. Like I haven't found anyone who said they were atheists or like deny the fact that there's something more than just physical world. So, yeah. Stefan? Um, how do they view God? Well, some believe he doesn't exist, but I think, too, even though they may not believe in God, they're interested in spiritual things, but it might not always be the right kind of spiritual things. 
Um, in fact, there are more mediums in France than there are registered doctors. Um, they're just very, <laughs> you know, if there's a spiritual vacuum, it's going to be filled by something. Um, and I think if they do believe in God, it's more of a, a distant God who's not very um, active and involved in what's going on. Um, I think, too, just with um, the idea of humanism, that man is getting better and progressing, um, the society is getting better. They don't have, well, a lot of my friends, like, didn't have a concept of what sin was. They didn't understand, you know, what, what that is. they like, I'm a good person. They don't understand if you tell them they're a sinner. Um, and because they don't have that concept of sin, they don't see the need for a savior. Um, Would you just agree with that completely? Awesome. That makes it awesome. Okay. okay. Let's keep going. So um, I'd say um, I saw a picture of Mary Ann's church, and I wanted to ask Mary Ann, what does your church look like? What, how would you describe it? Um, the church I went to in Nigeria was, um, I don't know, we just had benches, like rows of benches, and we also had Western instruments like guitar and keyboard, but we also had like national um, instruments like the rig or like the gourd shaker that was just made out of things that people grew or just local um, things that you can find around. And church is just a time where, I don't know, you, like we have, the pastor can preach. We also sing. Dancing is very much allowed. Um, and the preaching can go for as long as, like we don't really have a, yeah, they have a set time, but no one really follows it. Like it's just whenever they're done talking about all that they have to talk about. And it's just, I don't know, I love church there because it's not too, you're not too much thinking about, oh, it's time for me to go or you, you can just be there and praise God. You can dance however you want. No one is going to think of you as, I don't know, being weird or anything. You're not going to get written up for it? No, no, we oh, can. <laughs> that's nice. Anyways, going on to the next one. How would you describe uh, evangelizing to your culture in, in the Philippines? Because I don't think we really hit on that yet. Um, in the Philippines, like, people are pretty receptive. They have, like, a very high view of Americans because of the American influence in World War II. And so the fact that you're there and you want to tell them about Jesus, they're like, why would you want to come and share with me? Like, you guys are so beautiful and you would give up your time to come share with me. And so because of their, their, their Catholicism background, um, they're, they have an idea of God. And so they already have, like, the foundation of, like, they know about God, but they don't have a relationship with him. And so it's, like, it's such a joy to be able to share with them that like you can have a personal relationship with God and you don't have to earn it. You don't have to do good works for it. And so they're very open to that oftentimes. Susanna, can you tell us a little bit about the French church? How do you guys do church? Normandy. Well, my church is probably really different than other churches, but <laughs> we were a really small church um, into like probably the only church, Protestant church in like five towns next to us or probably more um but I mean it's just like a church service you could find here we had songs we sang hymns French hymns um we had a message an offering I mean and we had like instruments my mom played the keyboard I played the clarinet and my siblings too played instruments we were the orchestra <laughs> that's cool I like orchestras Stefan how is your uh, experience different um well my experience was a little bit different because uh, my church met in our living room uh, and they still meet there because our church is really small and so we don't have enough money to even think about getting a building. Um, and so we have couches and we have dining room chairs and we sit in a circle and praise God and it's, it's pretty awesome. It's, it still is fairly structured um, but it's, uh, yeah, we like to, because we're trying to reach our community, we do exceptional services every uh, six weeks and invite the community, and then we'll do them outside, and we'll have a barbecue afterwards or things like that. But that, yeah, so it's a little bit different than a lot of churches, but most churches in France are pretty small. Uh, huh. That's awesome. Have we heard about the Philippine church yet? Can we talk about that? So the Philippine church is like very, um, it's not as structured in my experience as 
like we meet in houses like Stefan said or um, in storefront rooms and it's not so much about the building um, it's just about gathering and fellowshiping together and um, as I was talking with my dad and he's he just like told me how the big emphasis is we are the church not any building um, so in Catholicism there's like the priest and everything but when you come to Christianity um, Hebrews says that you are um, a holy priesthood of people belonging to God and so um, it's not about where you are as much as um, who you're with. As far as like the service goes, you said a lot of it is very Western just because of the Western missionaries and stuff. Um, so like you'll have different denominations, but it follows general structure of worship and um, speaking and such. Cool. Can I get two of you guys to talk about maybe a cultural barrier you guys experienced when you guys came here to Omaha, Nebraska to Grace University? really wanted to share. <laughs> I'm just glad that none of you knew me my first semester here at Grace because I was a sad, depressed, angry girl who just hated everyone. So <laughs> um, the sh I don't know if there was one specific cultural barrier, but the shock came in that I realized, because I thought I wasn't going to have any problem adapting to American culture. You know, I'm American, my parents are American, but I actually didn't live in the States until I came for college. And my first two years were in a Bible institute that was secluded in upstate New York. And it wasn't until I came to Grace that uh, the differences between French and American culture really hit me in the face. Um, and I wasn't expecting culture shock. I wasn't expecting all these emotions I was feeling. And I think what made it worse is I came uh, to Grace uh, mid-year in January, and I didn't know anyone. Um, and so I didn't really talk to anyone. I didn't trust anyone. I thought everyone was just uh, very shallow and trying to run away. I actually left Grace for a semester, but not technically, because I went down to the Heart Institute in Florida, which was in my major. Um, um, and it actually took me like a year and a half to work through that and just to go from I hate this place to actually, you know, I really like this place and um, just understanding the differences differences between the two cultures and you know there's good and bad in every culture um i think one of the main things is that like one of the main reasons i thought people were shallow is because in american culture there's more like focus on entertainment and experiencing things and having fun whereas in france it's a lot more serious culture and they're more philosophical and they value more knowledge than experience so. um it is different coming back to like a school here because like I did online community college for two years and one of those years was in the Philippines and so I came back from the Philippines and then was came right to Grace after the summer and so it was very different like being around people who are Christians like all the time like Manila is huge and there's like so many people but I wasn't used to like living around so many people at once and so I was just like there's people everywhere like all the time like how do you do this but and I guess like we're just so like as Americans we're into materialism and after being in a country where they don't have a lot but they're so happy and where we have so much but often we're so unhappy and so it's just um, learning that both cultures have good and bad like um, Susanna said but it's okay to be who you are from your culture and also embrace other people's cultures. So. Good. So at this point I'm going to offer this as a time to ask questions yourself and if not I'm going to end it with one question. And that will be mostly a challenge for you guys. Okay? You guys have any questions? Just raise your hand and then I'll come find you. I'm like Liam Neeson. All right, hold on. What is the worst thing about the United States? <laughs> Next question. Uh, oh, no, you're good. Who wants to answer that? The food is really not very good. <laughs> All right, next one. That was short. <laughs> oh, I've had real food, and I've had it in France. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions we have? Dr. Linder's got a question. For each of the countries you represent, there's a Christian, you know, at least a church background, you know, Catholicism, Catholicism, Christianity, and yet, obviously, you know, there are some challenges to evangelism. 
So I'm curious, culturally, is, you know, would, would you say that there is a felt need kind of that runs through your culture that provides an opening for talking to people about, you know, the gospel? You know, so, so is there some, you know, what, what would be the characteristic or you know, some kind of cultural felt need where even though m- people might say, well, you know, yeah, no, I know all about Jesus, you know, because I'm, you know, got that background. Okay, so um, it's Catholic, like um, Dr. Leonard pointed out, and so it has a Christian background, but the concept of grace is just so lost in um, the Filipino culture, and it's this idea of um, Jesus' work plus my work. And um, eh, Holy Week is here, and in the Philippines, they have this thing called flagellantes, which is where um, men will go around and whip themselves and and bleed, and some men will even, like, sterilely crucify themselves, and it's just so messed up, and it's this idea of we're so dedicated, and look what we'll do for Jesus, and um, in Holy Week, like, they emphasize the cross, but, like, then Easter Sunday comes, and the resurrection, and this idea of redemption is just lost, and you're like, yes, Jesus died, but what did he die for? Um, and so I think the idea of grace is just a huge bridge um, for the Filipino culture, and just um, my dad pointed out that, that this is something that's not just um, not just something that Catholics struggle with, but it also, like, even in our Protestant culture, we can struggle with it, too, where we're like... Um, we think we're like so solid in the Bible, but then like we get this mentality of works and it's not about what we do. It's all about what Christ has already done. That's good. One last question here. Okay. Uh, yeah, you were going to answer that one? Sure. Um, then after that, we'll do one more. I think in Nigeria and even a lot of African countries is fear, like fear of the spirit world and like, what witches and like demons can are gonna do even like even christians are afraid sometimes of oh like because you see a lot of demonic activity happening around and a lot of the times you're you're just afraid that they might harm you or they might harm your kids and stuff so like even going to school there my parents will always warn me and my siblings to like not take things from people or even take food from um just people in the streets just because they can, or even our friends at school, because we hear stories about um, children giving food to other children or like people giving food to other children and then at night like they come attacking them or like initiating them to like a witchcraft kind of thing. So there's this idea of there's so much fear and I think we need to like um, just remember that God's power surpasses any other power in the world and so yeah. Um, So I'd love to hear from all of the countries about this. Um, So I know that we've been talking a lot about maybe some of the issues that we see in other countries as far as Christianity, but what does the American church have to learn from the church in these other countries? You will need a lot of perseverance um, in France. (laughs) I don't know. I think, well, just in American culture in general, we like things fast, and we like like results immediately. But things take a lot of time in France. Building relationship takes a lot of time. Building trust takes a lot of time. Um, and I think, um, yeah, that's just one thing that um, you can learn is that if even if you don't see immediate results, it doesn't mean that you've failed. Um, it just means that it's going to take more time. I feel like relationships are a big issue here and um, it can be so easy to just like go to church and you're doing the church thing and you're going to service so you're all good but like there's not a community and I just feel like in the Philippines that was something um, that time spent and fellowship with other um, believers and just um, at least in my church like we'd always have lunch afterwards and it was just um, not even time talking about Jesus, though time about Jesus is always great, um, but time just um, building a relationship. And I feel like in the Christian church we can, um, or in the American church, not the Christian, um, we can get so um, this is my signal of time for the church and nothing else. Yeah. So as we wrap up this meeting, I just wanted to read one thing. Um, 
I, don't, I read this every semester, but it's Revelation 7, 9. It says, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. So this is my challenge to you guys, is as we see ourselves as, as a church, capital C, shout out to Dr. Schmidt, um, we want to be able to know the needs of our brothers and sisters around the world. And as you guys are hearing this, I hope this motivates you guys to, um, one, lift, the, lift up these countries in prayer, because I'm sure these countries all are facing different challenges. And if you guys want to know more about um, these countries, uh, most of these people live here and everyone else is, we're all here, you know, you guys can stump, stop us and ask us more about this. But uh, I just want to end in prayer. So Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, to know more about your creation, God, more, more about the people that you have placed close to us, Father, for um, your purposes, God. I pray, God, that this chapel would bring edification and glory to you, God, as we just get to know on how we can serve one another and build a um, solid relationship with one another. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all are dismissed.